So a load of you absolutely love this a century old observation on Wikipedia where you just get molten cesium chloride at about 600-ish degrees Celsius and you electrolyze it and rather than getting chlorine at one electrode and cesium at the other, which is the only sensible thing that you could possibly predict, you get a blue solution at the, the cathode and that's really surprising. Now, oh yeah, for me, I've got a little out that you're actually producing cesium metal there, and the cesium metal is dissolving in the cesium chloride to make this blue solution. Now, sure, I could conclusively prove that by getting some cesium and chucking it into this solution and seeing if it goes blue. Um, cesium is expensive as hell and a pain in the ass to deal with, so I wasn't going to do that, but if you think about it, if you are sort of dissolving electrons in here, almost any alkali metal should be almost as good. So, you know, lithium, sodium, potassium, anything. Uh, lithium is a nightmare for glassware. Lithium, once it gets hot, you know, a few hundred degrees, it'll actually start to chemically react with the glass, and it's just a runaway thing. It just eats through the glass like it's nothing. The glass, ca the glass cracks, the whole thing catches fire. Lithium fires are all but impossible to extinguish. You basically got to let them burn. The whole, oh, you, you smothered them with argon. Um, yeah, lithium, I'll get some video footage of it sometime. Um, so in this case, I went for sodium potassium alloy. This also has echoes going back to how I originally made cesium all those many moons ago, which is the standard sort of way of making cesium, which is you get cesium chloride and you chuck some lithium in and then you heat it up and distill off the cesium. And that, that, that's all very good and well. Um, and of course, it's done in a stainless steel vessel because if you do it in glass, uh, the lithium just will instantly eat through the glass and you've got molten cesium burning. The whole thing's just a disaster. But it did get me thinking that maybe just adding lithium to cesium chloride, you'll get a blue solution. Well, yeah, molten blue melt, that sort of thing. So this is what happens when you get sodium potassium alloy and add it to cesium bromide. And it just does so many weird things, right? So this is me actually doing the experiment in real time. So these are my real time reactions to the experiment, which I've never done before. And it just oh completely takes me by surprise time and time again. This is weird. It's green, brown. Oh my word, it's so cool. It's brown. Oh, you tell me what colour that is. Bromine? That is so cool! I've no idea what it's doing, but... Huh. Oh, 
Okay, it's melting again. Let's see what happens. Oh, no, impossible. Now, when I melt it, it changes color. How is that possible? Oh, that's a reaction with the glass. Not everywhere. Good enough. That's good. I like that. Okay. That is maybe tangibly green. Interesting, it doesn't change back when it's. Yeah, it's definitely blue, not green. No, it's different, it's green, it's not blue. It's just, oh, it's getting lighter. Oh, it's green. Meanwhile, the iodine is gold, it's metallic gold. Beautiful that one. And it's light green and it's getting lighter. Lighter as we speak. Oh, and it's the cesium's precipitating out. I can see it. Oh my god, it's coming out in the cracks. That's a, that is gorgeous. That's just the most amazing thing ever. How? Or is it gas bubbles? Got the gas bubbles. It looks like metallic cesium. It precipitates out and cool it. Can that be real? I'll put a bit more into the hole. That's amazing. Amazing. That's gorgeous. So that's the core of it. When you add sodium potassium alloy to cesium bromide in this case, it dissolves and kind of gives a, a brown solution when it's dilute, but a blue solution when it's concentrated. Don't really understand that, but it does kind of give the blue solution. And then when that when that cools down. The cesium looks like it precipitates out from the cracks. Again, something I don't really understand. Anyway, so I also did this with a load of other salts like uh, cesium chloride, bromide, iodide, and rubidium chloride, uh, if I remember. So I'm leave the leave the footage of all of those after that. Um, some of it is kind of samey, some of it is different. And there it is. Um, but some of you also requested all of the video, so here it is. Fluoride. That's more like it. Yes. Okay. Fantastically melted. 
bit more juice. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a bit of a reaction. Smells funny. Very nice. With the clouds, I think I'm going to call it quits there. I bet this does the same thing. Okay. Oops. I bet as it cools out, it goes all silver. Oh, gold. It's gold. There it is. So cesium dissolves in all of these. Sometimes it gives colourless solutions. And there it is. Yay! I said, oh, what the fuck? Okay, I was hoping to avoid doing cesium chloride, but it looks like I'm going to have to do it. It's amazing. I really it's just cesium. Huh. It's all a little on the hot side. Right. Let's try our rubidium chloride. This is the expensive one. Um, hopefully not toxic, but expensive. Cesium, they're beautiful. This is rubidium. Okay. That's what I mean, it looks wet. That is wet. What the fuck is How wet is this shit? Three times my ass. See the steam coming off. Save my 
myself a bit of trouble here. If I can. And get the hell away in early. There we go. It's blue. It is blue. That's easy enough to see. Oh, this gets really blue. Too closely. Right, we're definitely getting into glass melting territory. Oh, well, there we go. And when it crystallizes, it goes colorless. That's so fucking weird. What does the color come back when it melts? And the answer is yes, it does. This is sort of the action that it was on. sort of react away. At least I assume that's what it is. That is the uh, the 
Hmm. How fascinating. How fascinating. Already, I can see it sort of going brown. Blue in the top there. It's fascinating, these metals have gone from um, um, Okay, here it comes, here's the metal. No, that's not as pretty as the others. Oh. I think it's mostly related to quantity. Hmm. I should have sorted out the light up on my camera. That's actually much better. Over the hair I do all these again. Oh. These are the final experiments. So it's using bromide, so iodide, bromide, I think that's the fluoride, that's the rubidium chloride, and the cesium chloride. So I hope you enjoyed the raw footage. Uh, if you did, give the video a thumbs up. And I assume if you made it this far, you're probably subscribed already. But if you're not, give it a thought.